Hi everyone, I'm Furt and welcome to my video. This video I'm working on a Cummins Onan generator. This generator came off the back of a utility truck. It caught on fire. It got burned up pretty good. You'll see the pictures here in a few minutes. The thing about this is that I went and looked at this thing. And it's fuel injected and the price for the parts on this thing are astronomical. And you would have to replace just about every electronic component on it. Wasn't worth going that route with it. But one thing I did notice when I was looking at this was a rod coming out of the front of it that drives a governor for a carburetor. That automatically told me that when they built this engine, they built it for either or. They could have went the fuel injected or they could have put a governor on it and stuck a carburetor up there. I knew at that point in time when I saw that, that I could put a carburetor on this thing. It'd probably be a lot cheaper, which it was. I was told that I couldn't do it by a so-called professional mechanic. And it kind of pissed me off because I know what I'm talking about. I know what I see. And I know my capabilities of what I can do. And to have somebody to try to belittle me so they can pretend like they're better at something than I am, pisses me off. So all you young kids out there, don't let these kind of people get free rent in your head. Just do your own thing and do what you know you can do. And you'll find out that someday you're going to become more successful in life than these kind of people ever will. But anyhow, let's see if Ferd was right. Let's see if you can take a fuel-injected Cummins generator and put a carburetor on it instead. Thanks for watching and enjoy the video. What I'm working on here is an Onan generator. And a lot of these are used in RVs. This particular one came off the back of a, what they call a bucket truck. It's a, a little truck that has the lift on it. To, take people up to the telephone poles and it runs the hydraulics on that bucket. So this one is like a combination. It has a generator to generate electricity, uh, usually a plug up there and various places around the truck where they could plug tools in. And then the drive on this end of the crankshaft to drive the hydraulic pump for it. This motor, caught on fire. I don't know how it happened. I know that it was being worked on by somebody and it caught on fire and all of this stuff on the front got burned up on it. They hit it with a fire extinguisher to put it out and it's a mess. But here you can see the damage that was done by the fire. It was all right up here in the front of the engine, right in this area here. Everything over on this side wasn't damaged by the fire. This evidently was unplugged from the carburetor or was pulled off or, or something because there's, you can see where this isn't burnt as well i'm just you know sitting here trying to figure out what went on so my thinking is that somebody had pulled that off and they were cranking it over trying to start it while that thing's pumping gas all over the place that's my theory of what went on but, but that's beside the point but getting back to the engine itself, this is fuel injected. The ECM for it is gone. They don't know what happened to it. It's missing. 
and you're looking at a lot of money just to replace that one particular item on it. Right now, we're just concerned on getting the motor running to be able to run the hydraulics on the boom. I'm going to convert this from fuel injected. Here's the injectors here, a map sensor, a lot of different electrical components that this ECM over here was controlling. So I'm, I got to get rid of that. That's all burn up. Put a, a carburetor set up on it. Hook a governor up to it. It's already got the shaft for it. And uh, clean this thing up and, and see if we can get this thing back running again. First thing I'm going to do, I don't know if I'm even going to try to unplug half of these wires, but I'm, I want to mark them. Even though I'm not going to be using them anymore, I want to mark all these wires as to what they went to before I take them off. So I know where they went or whatever. Some of them are going to be used again. You got an oil sensor down here. We're going to have to reuse this for the oil sensor. And then on the bottom of the throttle body on this one, it's got two wires that actually ran a thermostat type deal for a choke. We're going to be needing this on the carburetor as well. So I need to mark all these wires so when I go to rewire this thing back up, I'll know what wires went where what wires I can use and which wires I don't want to use. So I'm going to start here and work my way back and eventually I am going to try to get this generator to uh, produce electricity as well. So let me get started on that. I'm going to get some tape and start IDing all these wires and get all that out of the way. And my plan is to lift this up, get the flywheel off of it and, and pull that motor completely off of it and then just go through it with a fine tooth comb and make it new again. I've got the intake off, all the wiring is off of it. Let's show you the, the harness. You can see all the yellow tape around it where I've marked all of my wires that I'm gonna be using and these that aren't marked up here are kind of unnecessary because they go to the fuel injection and I'm going to the carburetor so I won't need them. So I'm gonna get my engine hoist over here, hook it up, and then I'm gonna flip this thing over on its backside. I can't do it by hand, this thing is heavy. By myself, I'd end up getting hurt, so I'm gonna get my lift out. Here's the bottom side of it. There's a fan in here under the generator. What this thing does is it draws air through this opening up into the box and circulates it back down over here on this side where the mufflers are and blows it out here. This is what keeps this engine cool. Just to give you a little explanation of how the ventilation works on this thing. Now another thing that had happened after the guy put the fire out with a fire extinguisher it was soaked with gasoline from what I showed you earlier what I'm thinking and probably a lot. So he took oil dry and threw it all over this thing. So there's oil dry all over inside and out of this, this machine. And I need to get all of that shit out of there. It's, it's even down here. Now over here on the top side, you've got two bolts that hold this base the two bases together this one here's got the everything mounted on it 
and then this is the base that actually mounts to the truck. It's all spring loaded, and uh, there's a, a real long bolt up here, and then one down in that corner over there. And if you take them loose, these two pieces should come apart from each other. Let me see if I can get that one off. There we go. It's a long bolt like this. There's the head of it. And take my ground cable off of it. That's a number 13. Okay, once you get up those two bolts off, Take your grounding strap off of it, and this thing is loose, and I can take it off of there now. Got this little oily thing here. Put that over there. One of my springs fell down in there, so, and this thing's quite heavy itself. So, I mean, nowhere near like that, but. It's still got a little bit of weight to it. Take this plastic pan off of it, and then we can see everything that's up underneath it. And I'm noticing a lot of oil, and I'm thinking that that gasket might be bad on the bottom of this engine. And yeah, here's some more oil dry. Get all this stuff cleaned up real good. It'll be okay. And get these coil packs off of there. I'm buying brand new ones for it. You can see what trouble you have to go through to put them things on there. And the last thing I want to do is have to take this thing apart and put one or two of them on there because one of them was bad. It was being worked on because it wouldn't start. I'm going to eliminate that right off of the bat while I'm down here. So, next thing I'm going to do is get these coils off and then get this flywheel off. Yeah, push that rubber grommet out the top and it's split so I can pull it off of the wire. Just like that. And then another reason you want to change these out if you're down here is because the plug wire is attached to it. I saw a few bad spots on it, and they're not snapping into the spark plug very tight. That was a three-quarter, and the generator's a five-eighths. got this plate and the fan three number tens holding it on to that hub right there on the back side of the flywheel there's a hub that drives that serpentine belt just take your breaker bar half inch put it in that idler over here and release the tension off of it See if we can get it off of this side over here. Okay, we got that much off. And you have to take the idler off in order to get the belt out from between this hub and, and where it's at right there. I'm going to go ahead and take this idler off so I can get that belt all the way off of it. I think it's a 13. There we go. And now I'm ready to pull the flywheel off of it. I came behind it right here and just barely tapped it a few times, spun it, tapped it again, spun it, and it popped right off of there. So there's our flywheel off of it. To get this hub off of the generator, 
I've already got it loose there. Left the bolt on it without the washer and just used a uh, polar Salmon Harbor Freight. Fairly reasonable. That one's got three holes on it. You're going to have to find some longer bolts. You can't use the ones that were in there. I got everything done on the bottom side of it that I want to get. I'm going to lay it back down. And then I'm going to pull the top of that generator off of it and get that armature up out of it and just check everything to make sure it's okay before I put this thing back together. Now, up to this point, kind of showed you the damage and what I have to deal with as far as fixing this engine and getting it running again. There's a lot of information that's not going to be in this video that are actually in other videos because it's such a huge project. I couldn't put it all in one. Where I'm leaving off at, if you go to my channel, and look for replacing the governor. You'll see where I've taken the engine off of it, put a new governor in it. I'm going to put the belt back on it. All the stuff underneath, including the pans. You'll get a lot of detailed information out of that video there. Now with the carburetor itself, I had to rebuild it. There's another video for that one. That has a lot of good information on where you can find parts that are not available through anybody. I did a lot of research and I crossed a lot of numbers and found parts for them. So if you have to rebuild your carburetor or do anything to it, you need parts, go check that video out. The links are in the description below. Let me get back to this one and get it back together and see if we can get it running. Here's the two intake manifolds, but this is the one with the fuel injection. Your injectors are here and then your sensors, you got another sensor that went down in there. If you look at them from the top down, they're identical. If you look at the numbers on the top, there's that one, there's that one, they're the same. This one just doesn't have the ports drilled out for the fuel injection. They're identical. This is for the carburetor. This is for the fuel injected one. So, you know, they're going to fit. All right, I'm ready to put my intake manifold back on it. And I dug down in my big old gasket collection I got. And got me some Kohler intake gaskets. Same thing. Everything's Kohler on here. Everything bolts up nice. Didn't run them down. And I'm going to torque them down at 30 foot pounds. ready to put the governor assembly on it. Now, like I mentioned maybe before, because this was uh, fuel injected, it didn't have a governor on it. Everything was electronically monitored and controlled by that PCB or ECM or whatever that little box was over there that's missing. Luckily, I was able to go to Cummins and get all the parts I need. You need everything from uh, number 6 to 16 on it, with the exception of this little uh, blue thing and the hub. It actually comes with this assembly right here. But anyhow, here's the governor shaft on it. It has one on it, so it was made to go either way, and it has a left-handed nut that goes on it. You got to turn this backwards to screw that thing down. I'm showing you this now because it's easier to see everything like the shaft coming out of the engine and the backwards threads but do not install this on there yet. We have to put it on the carburetor 
and tighten it down after we've installed the carburetor. I'll show you that here in a few minutes. Do not tighten this thing down before you put that carburetor on there. You'll have to get a puller to pull that thing off of that shaft. Up here, there's a bracket. There's a little groove right here. Fits on the head. I ordered the screw, the bracket, everything. There we go. Next, you have this little adjuster that goes down in there, like that. Now, one of the springs is going to hook to this, and later on, and there's there's a nut you have to order too that goes to that. And then later on, after we get that spring on there, we'll uh, we'll adjust adjust everything up. Got our governor spring and our little rod that goes from the governor to the throttle. Now we want to put that spring inside of that. Just like that for right now. And then we got this other spring that's going to go over here. We'll go ahead and hook that up and just let it dangle there. So we're going to go ahead and get ready for our carburetor so you got you got a gasket and then you got this spacer it's hard plastic it's going to go on there I'm going to use this Kohler gasket that I got with my rebuild kit so now we can take our carburetor and make sure your carburetor has that little nylon bushing in there. And on one end of this rod, we're going to hook the spring in there. And then we're going to take this rod on that one end where it's got the Z bend and hook it on there like just like that. Now we can take the other end, hook it on there, and then when I get it on there and I don't have to hold it with two hands, I'll go ahead and hook this spring to it right down there in that little hole. So this is actually ready to be put on. Just going to slide that on there. There we go. Okay. Let me get that little spring down there and get it hooked on there. My big old fingers on it, and then there we go, got it hooked. Okay, now the on this hub and on this rod that goes into the engine, they're cone shape. So you kind of just want to be aware of that when you're putting that on there because if if you lock it down you're going to have to uh, get a little puller to pop that thing back off of there okay I'm going to work my throttle over here and make sure everything's working okay now, because this is a left-handed screw, when you turn it onto that shaft, it's going to turn it in the direction that it needs to go to make contact with the governor inside the block. So we want it in a full, wide open position, so we're just going to lift up on it over here. We're just going to tighten it down. Lift up. And tighten it down and I could see from here where it turned that shaft counterclockwise snug like that on these generators you'll have to find out which one you've got 
whether it's the 5.5K, I think it is, or the 7K. This is a 7K. On the governor, everything's the same on them, except for this spring. You can see the difference between the two of them. This one here is for the 7K. This one here is for the smaller 5.5. Big difference in them. Also a big difference in the price. They're pretty much the same size lengthwise. The big difference is this is much thicker. And then you can see there's a lot more coils on it. So this is a heavier duty or spring and this is for the 7K. That's what's got to go on this one. It's easy. There's a hole in the adjuster. It's going to go in there after you put this in. Just put it in there like that. And then I'm going to pull this one down to that governor lever and just kind of hook it in straight down there to the one that, that, that's closest to it. And I'm going to start at that point. I'm going to adjust this down. And then if I have to, I can move this over a notch or two, but usually you don't have to do that. Just bring it straight down to that end one and you should be okay. Okay. Changed up the plants. This is my old wiring harness. The guy that I got the carburetor from on eBay also had a complete wiring harness with the box and it was like 60 bucks so i went ahead and i bought the whole thing that way i don't have to screw around with this but what i did once i got it i laid them both out on the table and just transferred all the wires that i had marked off of this one on to the new one that i got and they're just like i mentioned earlier i think they're pretty much the same with the exception of this one has a few more wires on it that went to the fuel injection. But everything else is pretty much the same. Even the PCB box that they've got in here is the same part number as the fuel injected. So that's the route I took. Okay, with this wiring here, I couldn't really show you everything that that I did to get it to where this would fit but there's a lot of wires there and there's a certain way they did this and it crams it all inside these two boxes if you have to take all of this out look and see the bends in the wire and try to figure out which wire went out first i got this uh, small one that goes back to the kill switch and the solenoid it comes out on the bottom like i said everything is like wrapped a certain way and if you don't get it like that you'll end up like these jokers did with a control box like this, broken, it had screws in it to hold it together. And I've dealt with this many and many a times with these guys and I tell them if the thing is not working, there's nothing that you could do inside there to fix it, bring it to me. But anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and put this thing together. I've got everything grounded down there this box has to go down first before you tighten this one on. I got it on backwards there. And it's going to slide over top of my little computer thingy there. And then I'm going to pull it forward because I got that new piece of foam back there. That's just some kind of packing foam that I found. The other one that was on there was like destroyed. So, fish that down there. 
But this is just going to keep dust and dirt from flying up in there. And then I need to look down, make sure all my holes are lined up. But this is like really unbelievably a tight fit. And if you don't get it just right, you'll end up breaking these. They break real easy. We'll start one down in here. Now our fuel pump's coming up from here. Got my fitting. Got my Teflon tape on it. And we're going to go ahead and pipe this thing up to the carburetor right up there. It's going to go around the back side of this wiring. Right here. And then up to that. Cut it right there. Just a little bit longer than what I really need, I think. Now this one down here was a little hard to get to. So I went ahead and loosened up the fuel pump and dropped it down so I could get that clamp on it. Just wasn't nowhere to get to it in that tight little spot right there. Okay, I'm going to do a little walk around with my wiring. But right in here, you can see how close everything is. You got this pipe that's going to go down through there from the breather when I put it on there. This is my spark plug wire. Everything's wrapped. All of my wires to the carburetor. The oil sensor. This is that long coil wire that we put in earlier. Goes down through here. The short coil wire. You can follow it around. Goes down in here. On the back side, you got this white wire. Goes all the way up to the battery the wire from the solenoid goes up under that box there this wire here charges the battery and it comes off of the voltage regulator here now this I'm not going to plug it in when I turn this thing on because if you look here that thing's burnt. So I need to test this before I hook anything up to it. This is the two wires coming out of the generator to feed it, the AC current. They go up and under the box. And this thing is $350. I hope it's not bad, but it sure looks like it. That may have been what caused this thing to catch on fire right there because that got hot it it melted the insulation around the old wire this is a new one that I made for it and go around here I haven't it, this goes to a remote switch this is my my fuel pump wires these are the fuel pump wires coming out of the box. I've made up a couple of wires. These connectors are going to plug into the breaker 
on this side of the box over here, we've got two of them. I'm going to be wanting each one of them. I'm not going into all the electronics, but I can tell you that's where your AC is going to come out at. On the other end, I've just got these two couplers. That's where I'm going to stick my tester and test the voltage once I get it started up. Let me go ahead and plug these in. Doesn't really matter which one goes where. Okay, I got those on there. I want to put this back down and secure it back down the way it was. And these two wires, I'm just going to run out the side over here towards me. Until we get everything straightened out, we're probably going to get a bunch of codes from that PCB. And then once we do get it all straightened out, we can reset it and everything should be fine. I don't have the voltage regulator hooked up. At this time, I've got a brand new one back there, but I, I want to test the leads going to it while it's running before I plug those things in. That voltage regulator is 300 bucks, and I don't want to burn it up. Okay, let's start this thing up. Let me turn that fan off. It's actually about 30 degrees outside and I'm freezing to death, man. Woo! I got 240 volts here. That's what I'm looking for. I got 16 volts going to the voltage regulator on the back side. That's perfect. That'll give me about 14 DC volts to charge the battery. This is living proof right here that you can change one of these engines from fuel injected to a carbureted engine. And it works perfect. Got the same PCB in it. There's no codes. What else could you ask for? I proved everybody wrong. But anyway, there it is. <laughs> Well, if you made it this far in the video, thank you for watching. I want to put that last frame up there. That smile. That's the reward you get for having confidence in yourself and the ability to prove people wrong when you know you're right. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you got something out of it. If you did, hit that like and subscribe button on the way out. Join the family. It's growing, getting big. And don't forget to hit that notification bell. When I put new videos up, you'll be the first to hear about it. Go watch a few more videos. There's a lot of good ones up there. And I'm telling you, if you're working on one of these owning engines or any kind of engine like this that is caught on fire and burn up like that, have fun. <laughs>